So what I wanted to do with this work was to create a participatory project whereby people can somehow understand how carbon moves through the planet. My name's Lawrence Gill and I'm Professor of Environmental Engineering at Trinity College Dublin. My scientific interests are on how carbon moves throughout the environment across the planet and the different forms that it can take. In my spare time I play a lot of folk music, particularly for dances, for folk dancing. So the way carbon moves through different forms and states is quite complicated, but it's also very important for everybody to understand its implications in terms of climate change. So what I wanted to do was come up with a folk dance that people take part in, so it's interactive, and this somehow enables them to understand the different ways that carbon can move through the planet and also the impact that water has in terms of those different states. So from a research perspective, it's, you know, very difficult to sort of communicate the, the significance and the, the urgency of taking climate action using facts alone. You know, they tend to leave people cold. Um, artists and art is so powerful um, in communicating the problem. And I think it's because what we do in science, it's very dry. Carbon dioxide. So this warming was driven by volcanic emissions. It's very rare a scientist would drive a visceral response. So I, I think um, there's a huge power in science and art to kind of work together. The premiere of this dance was performed as part of a conference called Sounds and Sustainability, which was a wider conference, which was trying to link artists and scientists together. Um, to explain different methods of uh, how art and science can explain different environmental processes. Music is mass emotion, fluid like the waves in ocean. Music is science and sounds. Very lovely to have the chance to, to make a piece for so many people to get involved in. Yeah, and it feels like you know climate change and this kind the carbon cycle it's it's stuff that not everybody knows about and it can be stuff that can be quite hard to explain so it feels really lovely to be you know a little part in in helping people engage and hopefully be inspired by the song the the music what they've learned the dancing and to maybe maybe they'll learn something along the way it combines artistic expression and science and the ability to transmit concepts that might be accessible for everybody to understand. Well, if you feel it in your body while you're dancing and when you're playing music, uh, it becomes much more accessible. Sometimes we, we know about climate change, but we don't know what actions we can take. But when we come together as a group and the Dance of the Carbon Cycles is an, act, an interactive dance, you know, you're not doing it alone, you get that sense of community. You know, you're bringing people together and I think that brings a sense of optimism that something can be done. People feel hopeless, they feel disconnected. They feel, I'm only one person. What on earth difference is it going to make? I guess the Buddhist view is that you're a raindrop. And a raindrop feels very vulnerable because it could evaporate. No one raindrop has any idea whether it was the raindrop that nurtured the seed of the corn that fed, fed the village, or it was just something that wet and out, you know? And it's not for you to know. I suppose I'm kind of scared of dance because I feel very um, uh, awkward and not very in touch with movement and things, but I want to be part of it. And um, I think it'll communicate these really complex themes way better than any graph or any paper or any words because there's going to be movement and there's going to be interaction. So there's going to be order and chaos. So to explain the dance, I have this diagram, which shows the three different dances representing the three different cycles um, on the one page. So the slow or the deep carbon cycle is represented by dancers wearing black hats with black tassels. The dance they do is known as a hantadro, which is a Breton line dance. And as you can see, it progresses around quite slowly. In the middle of the dance, we have the shallow carbon cycle, which is the organics getting converted into carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide getting converted into organics. This is represented by green hats on, on the dancers and is danced as a bourree, which is a French dance. And you can see that this 
interaction happens much more quickly than the outer cycle. And then in between this, we have the, the water cycle, which is represented by dancers with yellow hats with blue tassels, providing an interaction between the shallow and the deep carbon cycle. So what happens over time, millions of years ago, is that the water cycle interacts with the shallow carbon cycle, the organics, and takes that carbon into a mineral form in the form of fossil fuels. Um, and so the carbon then goes into the deep carbon cycle on the outer ring, which is represented by the purple tassels on, on the dancers. This accumulation uh, continues over time with more and more buildup of fossil fuels into the outer ring, the deep carbon cycle. But then in the Industrial Revolution, humans discover coal, start to burn fossil fuels, releasing carbon dioxide back up into the atmosphere and climate change and chaos ensues.
we're just raindrops. The raindrop doesn't have an intention. The raindrop has an effect. The raindrop doesn't congratulate itself. It doesn't have doubts about whether it'll do it or not. Raindrops drop. Just be a raindrop.